Welcome to another Wildfire live stream. The answer is yes, I have a haircut. When I was a young boy, my father took me to the city to see a marching band. He said, son, when you grow up, would you be the savior of the broken, the beaten, and the damned? He said, will you defeat them, your demons, and all the non-believers, the plans that they have made? Because one day I'll leave you a phantom to lead you in the summer to join the Black Parade. Me. And other times I feel like I should go Went through it all The F all the bodies in the streets Yeah, when we're gone we want you all to know We carry on Carry on And so you're dead and gone, believe me your memory will carry on, will carry on. And in my heart I can't contain it, the anthem won't explain it. A woman sends you relief from decimated dreams. Your misery and hate will kill us all. Do -do 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 -do. So paint it back and take it back and let's shout it loud and clear. Defiant to the end, we hear the call With me to carry on, we'll carry on And though you're dead and gone, believe me Your memory will carry on What's up? What carry song is that? Welcome to the Black Parade Right. I've, I definitely have heard that song before, but I was never on that bandwagon You were never like a goth or emo no i feel like greg but, but that was a wonderful way to start the show thanks for everybody for joining we've got cory madalina we've got mr real greg holmes himself nicholas jansen and angelica falco welcome to the live stream who's real greg holmes who's the man the man is a man well, we'll, get, we'll get to that soon enough <laughs> all right i mean he's i mean i could just introduce him right now and then we can he's, talk about he's been around the block a few times <laughs> What's MCR? My Chemical Romance. Oh. Are you fake? You f even I knew that. I know there was a concert that a bunch of people wanted to go to for My Chemical Romance, but... Jason Terrio! Mr. Jason Terrio, welcome. Welcome to the house. Man. Well, it's good well, to be back. here we are again for another... Uh, this is a special one. It's the, it's, they call it the banana one because it is our 40th live stream, official live stream. Woo! Congratulations, Jade. I mean, you're a big part of why we got this far. I mean, you're the main part. So <laughs> cheers to you. You enjoy that banana. Couldn't have done it without y'all. You've earned it. <laughs> I've been burning a lot more calories. I've been working out like a, like a goddamn horse, man. Oh. It's going hard. Well, I've been uh, getting those shovels in, so. Good. I'm very sore as well. Good. good, but you know, no pain. It's it's not good with the asthma. I mean, I was wheezing like a like a mule. I didn't know mules had asthma. It's it's hard out there. It's thick snow. But uh, I hope everyone's doing well with the with the weather conditions and all that. And we're all just you know hunkering down, Hold, hunkering down, holding it together. Shoveling the ways, that keeping those roads work. clear for the people that need it the most. Yeah, we're just we're living, we're living. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of like op I've seen a lot of optimism. I mean, COVID is kind of going down a little bit, so that's kind of good in yeah. term in terms of where we're at. I'm not getting optimistic. Me personally, I'm not a happy person. I've I'm not, never been optimistic. I'm not going to get up. Got to stay low. Right. Well, but, look at this heavenly lighting. That's very heavenly. Well, 
Um, Nick, I just want to ask you a question right now. Um, what does it know. feel like uh, to have a video grow really quickly? It's it's I'll scary. It I mean, especially when you're you know taking a usually things that I've have done well for me. I'm not really taking like a bold stance on something or an issue or, or a topic or a person, but um, I made a good. video criticizing Sia, which, you know, that's not very like controversial right now. Like everybody's kind of, you know, giving it to her right now with what her new film. Um, but uh, just the fact that like 3000 comments is very o overwhelming and I haven't really gone through all of them yet just because, it's it's a lot. It's scary. I don't know. When people are meaning what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's it's creating a conversation. So it's uh, yeah. It's it. You never get used to it. Let's just say that. Like, you know. well, you re you recently hit ten thousand uh, followers, and you're at ten point one already overnight, right? I'm at eleven point five now. So what I'm saying is, I feel like your growth now, if you can obviously there's a certain amount of like keeping up the momentum, but it's also just like creating new it's, content. Yeah. I don't, I don't know the how to growth keep up seems momentum. Be happening faster now. I mean, I've posted three videos today, just letting kind of things grow. Like, I don't know, like I'm just trying different things, different trends. Have you been contacted by anybody in regards to like this fund or creator fund? No. Well, the creator fund, the TikTok creator fund, which essentially like pays people per, like a certain, like maybe five cents per thousand view or whatever. Um, it's available in like the US, UK, France, Germany, Italy, um, but not uh, Canada yet. And there's been, you know, growing calls for it to be available to creators in Canada, which I think is good because, I mean, you need it. Obviously, it would be nice, you know, but. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing because I care about it. And, you know, who knows, maybe taking that to YouTube or to a podcast or to some other forum where, you know, there are already systems in place. I don't know. I don't know. It would be but, nice to do this, at least, you know, make a decent amount. Of, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like we had a previous uh, live stream guest was Vlad uh, Solikowski and mm -hmm. his uh, videos that he ran on YouTube got you know, a, a lot of traction. So right. I guess the question then becomes, uh, is TikTok the platform for you or can you take it somewhere else and see that same sort of engagement? That's tough, right? That's the question. I you mean, you will, the the audience, audience, right? will the audience carry over? That's the, that's the next challenge. Like right. trying to get my YouTube channel, which has been pretty dormant for almost four years now, you know, maybe trying to liven that up again and boost that. I mean, I don't know that the, well, this is all because of the live, this is all because of the live streams, really, truly, because they've kept yeah. us. They've been our content calendar every week and kept us, you know, engaged with social media. Which you know, some be, I sometimes hate social media because I do so much of it with my work. But then I also, I'm kind of rounding back to like what the point is about social media, which is um, generating content that shows the changes in companies too, and not just like promoting old stuff, but like you know, embracing the new and yeah. It's, I don't know. I mean, social media identities are interesting in in, in, a, in and of themselves um, and how you articulate a brand identity and how you position the brand uh, with things. And obviously we're, you and I, I mean, you on TikTok, I mean, a lot of stuff that's been going on too is, is pop cultural based, right? So it's kind of like the analysis of like stuff that we took in film school is like relevant for what you're doing too. Right. Uh, I listened to a really good podcast today. I, I should send it to you about the the uh, Canada land uh, one, right. about Michelle Latimer. It's very interesting. Yeah. Very I would, yeah, I would actually like to listen to that. An hour long. It's a little emotional, so just be ready. <clears throat> I'm a stone face. <laughs> um, well, I'm just going to do the intro, I suppose. About that, it's about that time, I mean. Sorry for the subpar um, musical performance this evening. I'm just not feeling it. But oh, it's, a, it's, it's the norm for you. I mean, <laughs> Performance issue. It's just, just performance. Guess what? You knew it was coming. Another wildfire live stream right now. Boys and winner are back in town for another round with good old Greggy. Join the man behind the literal fire of this film, our director, editor, and visual effects artist, Greg Holmes. Well, his day job as an order provisioning, provisioning, provisioning. I'm going to restart. 
While his day job as an order provisioning analyst with the provincial government pays the bills and keeps the family fed, Greg's true passion lies in connection with people through story and moving images. There is nothing more fulfilling for me than creating something that touches and connects with people. While filmmaking and storytelling, and Jill, are Greg's first loves, he has been an avid traveler since childhood, being fortunate to have traveled to 18 countries so far, with many more on that old bucket list. <laughs> Greg also enjoys his fair share of single-player video games, when time permits, and this love is an extension of his passion for story and the ability to get temporarily lost in another world. This was taken to a whole other level when his first VR headset arrived in the mail this past November. Can't wait to hop on that old live stream with the man who's been working so tirelessly on this film from the very first day. Everything's on the table for tonight's show. And it's for celebrating our 40th annual live stream, uh, yes. which is crazy. Well, and uh, yeah, we missed a few celebrate. weeks, though. Well, just to celebrate, you know, we're almost at 52, which would be a whole calendar year. And uh, we didn't do interviews every time, but we've done a lot of them. So sure. just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you to everybody who's uh, tuned in on the live stream. And I saw Victoria and Chris pop in, so shout out to them. Yeah, yeah, shout out to the actors that have been so family supportive of the in. project. Day the one, family's uh, coming in to see to see Dad talk. So Daddy, Daddy, um, so. just yeah. Everybody, post your questions in the chat. I'm sure Greg and I'll get to them. And uh, looking forward to uh, yes. well, Nick, I'll let you take the floor, brother. Without further ado, everybody. Director, uh, editor, sorry, I'm having a brain fart, VFX, VFX. artist, yep. hero, producer, father, husband, son, Greg Holmes. Take it away, Greggy. <laughs> Greg. Thanks, Nick. That's all I got. I can't uh, exit it. Do you mind exiting yourself, and then uh, I'll bring you. I'll bring him on. Oh, I see how it is. See you later, folks. Good night. Now I'll see you in a bit. That was Nicholas Jansen, uh, the one and the only. Black Circle of Rain is joined. Here we go, Greg. Here we go. Hi. Good day. How are you? Going. <laughs> I love your. Uh, I love everything about your frame. I love that there's a Simon. I love that there's a clock. It's a little off. It's a little off kilter here. Let's see. There we go. There we go. You can't see the, the pictures behind me, but I decided I'd sit in the front room. So got I got. Right I got my buddy beside me. Ooh, very nice. That's, that is old school. When's that? Is that like circa 1935? Yep. Oh, that's, oh, it's a picture. <laughs> oh, well, welcome, uh, Greg Holmes, um, to the to the live stream. It's good to have you on. Yay! Okay, yeah. Well, I, I, I might want to ask a question to I'd like to ask a question to Simon, if that'd be possible. Okay, hold on. He has to become animated, so we will we will give him just a second to become himself. Very nice. Uh oh, he lost an eye. He lost an eye. He lost an eye. Is he okay? There we go. Simon, are you okay? Does Simon talk, or is he a silent, uh, silent puppet? Do you talk? Simon, where were you? What year were you born? Oh, d shall I answer for you? Okay. Simon was born in the year 2017. What year were you born, Greg? What year was I born? That's a yeah. dangerous question. 1979, right at the very end. Oh. Right? Uh, where, yeah. Simon, Simon, where were you born? Simon, Simon. He was born in St. Catharines. Oh, he's born, where were you born, Greg? I was born in St. Catharines. <laughs> we have a lot in common. You do. I mean, you have a, yeah, a pretty... 
pretty close complexion too. Um, Simon, what are your parents' names? Um, well, his mother's name is Shannon. Nice. And um, do you have a father, Simon? I guess I guess I will be his 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 de facto daddy, but he doesn't really have a father who was involved in his um, building. So, okay. okay. What what was that like, Simon, growing up without a father at that stage in your life? Um, I I think I think Simon um, he turned out okay. I mean, there were some challenges, and and you know there there was. There was a bit of an absence that that was felt in his heart from 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 not having been formed from a from a father. But I tried to step in myself, and and I think Adrian filled some of that gap too. And we 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 kind of we we tried to be that male that positive male influence in his life. De facto, call me de facto daddy is what Nicholas Jansen is putting in the chat. Uh, what are your parents' names? Greg? My mother's name is Virginia, and my father's name is Scott. And um, they actually both appear in the film. So, and they were both in the film with Simon too. Do you, do you remember meeting? Do you remember meeting my dad and my mom? <laughs> they nice. Did you have fun? Okay, uh, good. How, like Simon's pretty young. He doesn't have any children. Not yet. But uh, you, uh, you gonna change that one day? You, you gonna be a bit of a ladies' man? Okay. Simon, you, you just be respectful, right? Absolutely. It's good to be, re you have to be respectful, Simon. Um, that's, you know, something that all men should tell other men to be with women. It's very respectful. Um, exactly. Do you, uh, so, you, so Simon, you want to have children one day? Beautiful. You want to meet a nice girl? Or whatever, or whatever. We're cool, we're cool. Whatever you're into. Yeah, you know, whatever way it swings, or both ways, whatever, I, or, or none, or some. Do you have any children, Greg? I have one, yes. I have one child at present, and I have 10 waiting to be developed, should I choose. They are in a state of suspended animation. Really? <laughs> really? These are babies? Yes. Pardon? These are your babies? Well, I mean, they're they're little clusters of cells, but yeah. <laughs> and put away, ready to go. Uh, what were uh, your... this one? I'm going to point uh, to uh, Simon, and then you can sort of uh, come in, Greg, if you'd like. But uh, what's it been like growing up in Niagara? What do you, what, what are your favorite parts about growing up in Niagara? Ah, <sighs> being well, per me personally, I I like I enjoyed growing up in Niagara because I was um, far enough removed from the busyness that you could you know go and ride your bike for fifteen to twenty minutes and be in the middle of nowhere. Um, right. It was nice to grow up in in a smaller community. You kind of got to know most of the people. You, it mean? was just Simon's I don't know. Bedtime. Pardon? Is this past Simon's bedtime? Yeah. Well, I mean, not not yet, but he he'd normally be be settling in for some for some Netflix time right now. Well, what is Simon? What's something that you can give to Simon so you can maybe stay up a little later? Give him some energy. No, that won't work. Um, I suppose I could. We got some caffeine pills upstairs. I could make it. Do you want? I could make you a hot chocolate like I had earlier. Yeah, no, yeah, he's, I think he's, he's probably fine. I'm fine, says Simon. Well, if he's, if he's a really good boy, maybe you can get him some ice cream for later. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. But that's. There's some ice cream in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's. I think he's a little. I think he's a little excited to go and attack that ice cream. Uh, Simon, do you want to like become an ice cream maker? Like, is like is ice cream something you're passionate about? Want to pursue a career in one day? Nice. Uh, what, what's your favorite? Uh, 
Well, maybe Greg, you can answer for Simon for this one. But what's your favorite uh, place to get ice cream in Niagara? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. Simon says, and this this was this was highlighted in the film that yep. the Avondale Dairy Bar is his absolute favorite place to go get some ice cream. I heard it's pretty good too. I've, I've had it a few times. It's quite. It's quite good. It's quite good. Uh, it's, what, it's good. What's Simon's feelings on gelato? Oh, Simon! Simon! Simon is Simon is very, 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 yeah. very positive about gelato. He loves the gelato. It's anything that's frozen and sweet and flavored and not too hard is uh, is okay with Simon. He loves uh, gelato. He he loves sorbet. He he'll even he'll even dabble in the frozen yogurt. I know. Uh, I. He's he's not that picky. I mean, he'll he'll take it all as long as it's frozen and it's tasty. He's a uh, he, he's not too picky. Simon, what flavor of ice cream would you like to see made coming in from Jacob Mario with the fire question? Yeah, you think so? Simon says chocolate fudge Ooh. with with cayenne and chili. Really? You're a crazy man. You're a crazy man. You both are crazy. That's why that's why you're that's why you're together. That's why we get along so well. Uh, what uh, you're a you're a lifelong Niagara boy there, Greggy. What is uh, I, kept I, down, I, what has kept you down in the heart of Niagara all these years? Well, um, let's see. I, I guess I just never had the opportunity or the need to leave. I, I start, I lived, I've lived here for all of my life. And then instead of going away to university, I stayed at home and yep. I went to Brock. So did you, but you came from out of town. Um, so I went to university here and then I took a year <laughs> off of university and then I ended up having a kid and then settling down, and then finding a job. And I just, I guess I never had the reason or the opportunity to, to, to kind of venture out. I've kind of been, stuck's the wrong word. I've just kind of hung around because my life has been here. Are you running and, a stuck? You're running a stuck? What? Are you running a stuck? Running a stuck? No, I'm not stuck in a rut. Stuck in a rut in a stuck. <laughs> Simon likes that one, but to a certain extent, <laughs> you travel a lot, so you do get out of the Niag the heart of the Niagara region. You you go to travel to all these beautiful countries. Eighteen countries and counting. Is that correct? Eighteen and counting. It's it's. I I made a list earlier today because I couldn't remember. It's you know what? It's a decent place to call a home base. Like I wouldn't want to stay I here. I love all my life. Um, but I'd loved, I loved. I love you know. It's inexpensive, relatively. It's close enough to everything that if you want to venture into Toronto or you want to venture across the border or you want to go, you know, as, as far as you want to go, you go to Hamilton, you can go. Everywhere is relatively True. close, True. but you don't have to be right in the heart of the busyness. When I was younger, I, I kind of dabbled with the idea of, of moving, to, moving to the big city, but I kind of like being a little bit distanced, but close enough. And the nice thing is these days, you don't necessarily have to be right in the heart of the downtown area if, if you Ooh. want to do, as long as you're close enough that you can get there within an hour or two. And, um, and then you can be anywhere. Okay, Nick, Nick asked a question, where to next? Um, we've been talking about that. So once quarantine is over, um, we've got a couple ideas about where we want to go. Personally, I really want to go to Southeast Asia. So I want to see, um, I'd like to go to Vietnam. I'd like to go to Thailand and I'd really like to go to Cambodia to see Angkor Wat. Um, I know Adam's been there and, and he told me some stories, um, about that. Adam's a bit of a world traveler too. He's lived all over the place. Uh, my writing partner. I don't know if you know, but I obviously he's living in Hong Kong right now. But yeah. if I can't go there, um, I'd love to go 
if if I have to go somewhere that's not you know a little more distant, I'd love to go back to Hawaii. Yeah. Um, I went there about nine years ago, and it's one of the favorite places I've ever been. It's just there's so many different landscapes and things to do and things to see, and there's there's the snorkeling and diving that you can. It's just it's a it's a cool place. So maybe there. Um, one day I want to go back to Africa. Um, I'd like to do the wow. gorilla. I'd like I'd like to do the gorilla encounter, where you go to um, southern Malawi or Uganda, and you get to go out into the bush with a guide, and you get to sit, and um, you're in an area where there's um, groups of 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 gorilla um, families, and if you sit in the jungle and you stay still and you can sit there the whole day. You get to do this for three days. It's, um, and the, the gorillas, the, the, the females and they're, and they're, they're young and sometimes the male silverbacks, so they'll stay a little bit further away, will actually come over to you and you can, you can have an encounter and an interaction on their terms with, uh, with wild, uh, jungle gorillas in Africa. That is one of the other things that's on the list. I'd like to go back to Egypt one day. I don't know. There's, there's too many places to list. Too many places to list to go. <laughs> but probably you, Hawaii or Southeast Asia. What about you, Simon? Where, where's your next for you? Yeah. Simon says he'd like to go to Kawartha Dairy. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, where would, you like to be, uh, where would you like to be seen soon? I mean, you have, Simon, you and Greg worked on a movie, a short film. Uh, and it's it's a film called what's it called? Ice Cream Ice Sunday. Sunday. Okay. And you know, Simon's a bit of a world traveler too. I'm not sure if you saw some of the pictures of him with his ice cream. He's been to was it the Tower Bridge? Mm -hmm. And you were in Paris, and you were in um, you were in Peru. He was in Peru. So he's been all over the place eating ice cream around the world. You, you were even, you were in Italy too, weren't you? See, that's where he discovered his love for gelato was in Italy. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, Simon. Um, this uh, question will be uh, targeted towards uh, your father, Simon, Mr. Greg Holmes. Uh, Greg, you developed yep. an affinity for the arts at a young age. And what were your interests in high school? Uh, oh, well. I mean, singing. I've always been. I've always been partial to to music and to singing. So I was in all the choirs in high school. Um, a little bit of acting. Um, I was in. I was in the musical that I was in in high school, and I, I took some acting classes and stuff when I was there, and you know, drama class and all that kind of stuff. But a little bit of filmmaking too. I mean, my friends and I, we did um, a couple of school projects where I stole my dad's. Um, <laughs> Yes, yes. Simon did it. Eat, pray, love. Mostly eat. There wasn't a ton of praying. It was mostly eat. Um, so in high school, <laughs> I was. Uh, I did a little bit of film stuff. You know, we we shot some. I wrote a couple of little scripts and got my friends together, and we shot you know some fan film type stuff for for school projects and. So yeah, I mean that's that's that and acting were the two things I I really kind of enjoyed doing in my high school time. It's part of why I decided after, you know, failing out of a year of computer science at university that I thought I'd try my hand at theater. <laughs> so is that what you took? Or what, what university or college did you go to? I told you, Brock. And what did you Same take? I took, well, the first year I took computer science, which was a terrible mistake as much as I loved computers and the idea of programming and program design was great, mm -hmm. but the math and the, the, the programming end of it weren't for me. So the second time, the second year I did a second first year and I did a year of theater. The theater. The theater, which is why I've been in the Do you agree, Simon? Yeah, Simon agrees with that comment. Because he loves. Go that. ahead. What's it? Uh, what's it to? Or what did you like the most about the theater? <sighs> oh, so much. Um, what, what are some of your favorite plays? 
someone like, oh my God, you're putting me on the spot here. Ask me, ask me that when I have time to prepare. What is um, your favorite play you've been in? The favorite play? Oh, the favorite play that I've been in? Oh, Spamalot, for sure. What that was, was that was the most fun. What, what was it like to perform on stage in Spamalot? Fabulous. It was wonderful. It was just the 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 community uh, of people and the the connections that you make and you know having to work all of that time to memorize all of your lines and the blocking and that you only get one shot to get it right and and being able to 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 sing and dance as terribly as i dance it's it's horrendous but just being able to be up there on Perfect. stage and three to five hundred people just you know doing your thing it's it's great i just i i love i love theater i love theater not i don't not as much as film but i would have to say it's probably my probably my second i i love i love musicals i love i love theater i love that having to do everything in that in that closed space it's so much about the dialogue and the interactions with people and and just being able to convey uh, those emotions and those connections in in real time it's it's great it's it's wonderful anyways thank you for that answer that was a beautiful answer i love it what led you to your career government uh well let's see I started out in a call center when I was 20, 21, 20, 21. I don't know, somewhere around there. Whenever I, whenever I found out I was going to have a kid. Um, and then I moved from there to doing more technical oriented stuff. So tech support, I did um, support for HP over the phone for printers and that sort of thing. And then about 12 years ago, I found out that the provincial government was hiring for the same sort of stuff that I was doing, technical support. They're hiring at the time. Are they hiring for right now? <laughs> Nothing. They haven't hired in 10 years. <laughs> government for hire. Um, but so I moved from where I was at a call center, which was kind of crappy, to the government. And then I got really lucky. Um, within my first year, they took us on as – internal contracts, which means that you moved over from being through a third party outsourcer to being an actual government employee, but not a full time employee. Then with 18 within 18 months, I was on full time. And here Rest I am. Victory. Rest Ten, years victory. Later. <laughs> Ten years later, with a, with a pension and benefits. Are you a politician? Oh, yeah. You like to be? You know what? I don't know. I love the idea of service and I love the idea of being able to serve the people and try to push forward, you know, agendas that people want and, and represent my community. And yes, that idea is very, very um, appealing to me. But the idea of what you have to do as a politician and the sacrifices that you have to make and the, how you you can't really be as true to yourself or true to your ideals as you'd like to be is a little disheartening. So yes, politics is very interesting to me. And the idea of, of being a politician is is fascinating and very appealing. But I think the reality of it is probably pretty pretty disheartening at the end of the day. I'm a little cynical when it comes to that. Great answer, as always. <laughs> Great answer. Um, okay, I have two different questions I want to ask, so I'm just going to go for the one, and then I'll go for the other one. Um, as far as, as far as politics go in filmmaking, um, and having films that you know sort of <clears throat> open up issues about certain things that you know could you know sort of spark kind of conversation and discuss. Uh, what, yeah. What's your sense on being a filmmaker that um, sort of? aims to put stuff out there that will inspire conversation. I think that's kind of the heart of, well, I don't want to say not every film has to be political or about starting a discussion, but that kind of gets me going. I, I would love to be able to put something forward through my art or art that I was involved in that got people talking about something and that maybe presented things to people in, um, 
in a way that they hadn't necessarily thought about before. And that really facilitates discussion between people about things that need to be discussed and things that are um, important to the, to the, to the nature and the fabric of society that we, that, that we live in. And I think if film can get people talking about the issues that people need to be talking about and can promote change and, and can further the, um, further the interests of equality and acceptance, I think that's tremendously important. And I think that's what we should all strive for. Best answer yet. Um, okay, so based on, based on, your, pre, based on your past, your, your past career journey, and then where you're at currently in your current position, um, tell me a little bit about what it's been like balancing the two worlds of what you do for the government versus what you want to do with film and wildfire. And also, are there any overlaps between your job and filmmaking? Between my job and filmmaking? Not yeah. necessarily. My job is not to not to not to denigrate anybody whose life is is um as a government worker but my job's kind of boring most of what i do is most of what i do is sorting out problems and and fulfilling orders for people's cellular phones so i, I don't think there's much overlap but i guess the nice thing about my job and and the lucky position that i find myself in is that i can do my job during the day and then I can leave it. And I get, you know, four weeks of vacation a year. I get all the holidays off. And I get all the time I need, both in the evenings and weekends and vacation time and the money, because, you know, it pays fairly well, to have the freedom to pursue the my passions, to, to pursue what I really want to do. So I think my job facilitates my ability to pursue filmmaking. And enjoy it, your life, and you get your four weeks off. Right? Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. But yeah, there's no real overlap, because one really doesn't have much to do with the other, as much as I'd love to. I would love a job that was somehow connected or, or you know, interwoven with the passions that I have, but um, they don't, but the one doesn't get in the way and it facilitates, you know, my ability to do the things that I want to do. Absolutely. Was there another part to that question? I can't remember. What do the next five years look like? <laughs> oh man. Well, that all depends on how quickly I can finish this film. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, the big plan is to make this, make it well, end up with a product at the end of the day that is good, that is entertaining, and that really showcases what we can all do with next to nothing. And then parlay that into funding for what I'm hoping will be a slate of anywhere between three and six um, productions that I can work on over the next um, two to five years that will lay the foundation for building a production company that can allow us all to have the freedom to tell the stories that we want to tell and have a place where we can kind of come together and work together and pursue stories and telling stories and the creating a space where that's possible. And that's really my dream, right? Is, is, is to be able to tell the stories that I want to tell and that other people want to tell in whatever way we want to tell them and be able to bring those stories and that creativity to the world. That's the dream, to just be able to continue doing this in perpetuity, full time, and not have to worry about a day job. And just be able to create and create and tell stories and, and just put beautiful, engaging, thought-provoking things out there into the world. Beautiful, man. You're going to make me cry over here. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful words by a beautiful man. Well, I'd like to segue uh, here to a little bit of a flashback um, to okay. my first uh, contact uh, with you and your wife. I... It was. Oh, damn. are I you talking Jill. about? I met Jill. Are first. you talking about, um, ab about Dom's film? Are you talking about the breakup? 
let me just go here. I got so when Jade met Jill, it was on the set of Fight, and oh, right. when, when Jade Jeez. met Greg, it was on the set of Dominic's film at Brock. And Greg, you saw me in my natural habitat, which was playing basketball. Uh, yep. you, you got a you got a really good first impression of me. You saw my my raw talent, shooting ability. Um, and before you were showing me your camera and like some some of your footage, and I I was showing yeah. him my, my jump shot, and uh, <laughs> we're, we're going at it real hard and fast. And now here we are, which is here we creative, are creative colleagues, filmmaker partners, good friends, and yeah, I'm just I'm I'm very happy with our uh, our relationship, and this is this has taken us to some pretty cool places just meeting. A random yeah, on a basketball court. I make on a basketball court of all places. <laughs> it's 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 funny that you never know, right? The connections you're going to make, where you're going to make them, where they're going to lead. Which is, I think, the most important reason to always be open in life. Always be open to making connections, to not closing the door to anything, to following things wherever they lead, because. You never know, right? I mean, every connection that you make with somebody, every every moment and every interaction that you have in life has the potential to lead somewhere wonderful. And I think we all just need to, if, if there's anything that I could impart wisdom-wise to people. Um, Wise and fearless leader, Greg it, Holmes in the house. Is that always be open to whatever life throws at you and don't be afraid to to follow it and chase it down because you never know anyways yes i would keep say, going i would say, if i would give any advice i would say don't be afraid to say no um you know and, uh, don't be a, don't be afraid to say yes either you know? i mean to a certain extent it's it's like you know you like for me i've been like very yes man lot of things and trying to like to run an iron fire and stuff and it's like you want to you know get ahead and whatever but i think it's good to say no so that you can focus on what you got to focus on too it's a matter of prioritizing right you have to decide on what you can't overload your plate and you have to understand what is most important and what is going to bear the most fruit and don't you know yeah and it's also about exercising that when you do say no with the right sort of situations because you don't want to say no to a good situation either uh it's hard to know sometimes what a good situation will what, what what will pan out so being open you know but also being like no as well it's good to have both i think uh i saw you act and fight uh which i also have a bit of a, a role I in uh making and 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 stuff um you were also in my film Amazing Grace, uh, where we spent an hour in your basement uh, talking background and uh, character and, and getting into it. And uh, you came Not out. Not in my kitchen over there. <laughs> well, you came out and you hit a homer. That's right. Yep. Simpson. I did all right. You hit a homer. <laughs> you hit a homer. You hit a grand salami, brother. You, you came out and you, you gave a great performance in my, in my, my short film. So I, I just appreciate you for doing that. Oh, well, I'm happy. You know, dude, I love acting. I'm not a great actor. I'm passable as far as an actor. I would love to get better. I would love to learn more technique and how to get a little deeper into my own emotional core. Um, but <laughs> acting's fun, man. I mean, acting is great. I want to do it more as soon as I can, whether it's on stage, whether it's in, you know, short films or people's films, as soon as I have the time, I would All love right. to do that too. I'm giving you the opportunity now to promote the ice cream short and tell us about this mythical ice cream short. Go. Okay. So ice cream Sunday is Simon's misadventure on his quest to fulfill his ice cream craving. Ice cream Sunday is a 14 minute short that I made about, well, God, I finished it over two years ago now. So we made it like three years ago. God, time flies so fast. And we're going to release it. Now, I've been figuring out exactly an appropriate release strategy. Film festivals, A, are expensive um, to enter into. You have to spend hundreds of dollars in entry fees, sometimes thousands of dollars, in order to just get in a couple of them. 
So I don't think I'm necessarily going to go that route. I'm going to submit to you short of the short of the week. Um, and I'm going to submit to, there's a couple other ones that I'm going to submit to as far as online festival type things. I'm also looking into something called Film Hub. I don't know if you've heard of Film Hub. It's a, uh, they're an aggregator. So they basically help you get your film onto any number of different platforms. So Amazon Prime um, through Prime Video Direct, I think, um, which allows you to self-publish on Amazon Prime Video. Um, there's also another one called Bitmax, which I'm looking into. I'm also probably going to list the film on uh, Viewler. I don't know if you know about Viewler, but Viewler's an online... Viewler? Viewler, yeah, Bueller, Bueller, no, B U U L E R. Okay. Um, it allows buyers and sellers to um to connect virtually and allows you to kind of um put your film up there for buyers to see for um streaming catalogs and that sort of thing, so they can they can go through that site and it's it's a place where there's a whole bunch of content there. And then they can kind of cycle through it and then decide who they want to make offers to and, and that sort of thing for large and smaller um, streaming options. Well, I just got a call so, from one of the heads at Netflix, and they want it. They're going to they're gonna call you after this. They're going to offer you, they're gonna offer you something you can't refuse. They're going to offer you. Hey. hey they're going to offer you. Would, that would be wonderful. I'm actually... I'm planning on having the release of Ice Cream Sunday, which the trailer's up on YouTube and Vimeo. If anybody wants to check it out, um, check it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna recut a pared down different version of the trailer. I'm gonna work on the image a little bit more. I might and I might do a little bit of visual work on it, um, both in up conversion and possibly in some. Um, removal of the of the sticks and stuff that move Simon's arms and just just a few things to kind of uh, improve it a little bit and I'm planning on releasing if all goes according to plan on July 18th to coincide with National Ice Cream Day So that's the plan and I want to release as long as possible Mark so. your calendars. That's like seven or eight years from now. So mark your calendars. Five months. Five months. And I want to make it exclude I want to make it exclusive to start, if that's at all possible. So for rent, buy, or subscription service. Mm -hmm. And then I want to release it widely, probably within six months after that. So that everybody who well, isn't necessarily part of that can see it. Well you've basically given us five months to apply to festivals, so good on you. That's the idea. I mean, we don't have enough lead time for a lot of the festivals, but there's a few things that that I'd like to uh, that I'd like to put it in for. Mostly online stuff, because at the end of the day, I've been sitting on it for two years. I just want people to see it. It'll be two I want to see six months to see it as humanly possible. Uh, did the puppet Simon sort of become alive on set, and were you finding yourself to hallucinate him becoming alive and have him in your dreams at all? Dreams, yes. I had a couple of dreams about Simon, and really? yes, he does dance. He, oh yeah, he for does real? dance real? in my head from time to pardon. For real, for real, yeah, you actually yeah. Um, and nightmares because working with a puppet on a budget with no puppeteer experience is challenging. Right, challenge. So, so this this Greg likes to challenge himself. So he picked a puppet movie for his first short film. And then, and then he decides to make a feature as his second personal project that requires fire, visual effects, a large cast, locations. It's look nothing like Jim, I like to challenge look like myself. Jim Carrey. You look like Jim Carrey. Your delivery is great. Great. I I think I'm a little too much. I have my facial expressions. This this is one thing I'd like to train out of myself, especially for acting, is I would like to train the big expressive facial expressions out of me just a little bit without you, getting both. What are you drinking there? Is that beer? 
This is a sour. Yeah. Ooh. I want beer. It's it's pretty great. Okay, let's. Uh, well, I have a question. Would you like to create a puppet horror film with me right now? A puppet horror film? With yes. Me right now. Uh, sure. Or a, a horror line reading with Simon. You you've seen you've seen the first three minutes of Ice Cream Sunday. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, I think we're going to page. Was was it seventeen? Oh, I don't. Hold on. Yeah, take a, take a moment. Give me a sec. I think I said. Bear with us, wildfire live stream fam and friends. Famine and friends. Uh, yeah, page fifteen. We'll just keep. We'll just start reading. Uh, fifteen. Uh, Simon be Danny. And I'll be Tony, and I'll read the other parts, too. And then we'll go... Wait. Actually, you know what? we got to go a little further down here, Greg. Sorry. Um, I want to get a conversation between Wendy and Danny. Both of them open at the same time. Here, let's do uh, page 24, and we'll do while they're driving in the car. And Greg... Okay. You do uh, Wendy, I'll be Jack, and Simon will be Danny. I might need to go upstairs. Okay. Into my, because I only have the phone here. Yeah. So I might need to go upstairs. That's cool. If you, Stay can, if you, can, bear, if you can bear with me. Bear and with. We'll go together. Oh, I like handheld. This is cool. We're, we're rocking now. <laughs> We're moving. Are we going up or down? We're going down. We're going up. We're going up. We're in the dark. So I'll going me. into this room here. And then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to see if we can do this. Okay, I'm going to do, Wendy. I'm going to do Wendy's monologue. I'm going to do Wendy's monologue while you're getting there set up. Okay. Uh, it's just one of those things, you know? Purely an accident. Um, My husband had a uh, been drinking, and he came home about three hours late. He wasn't exactly in the great mood that night. And while he had scattered some of his little papers all over the room, my husband grabbed his arm and pulled him away from them. It's just the sort of thing you do a hundred times with a child, you know, in a park, around the streets. And on this particular occasion, my husband just used too much strength, and he injured Danny's arm. Anyway, something good did come out of it, all because he said, Wendy, I'm never going to touch another drop. And if I do, you can leave me. And he didn't. And he hasn't had any alcohol in five months. I feel like that was a pretty good Wendy impression, I'm just saying. I think you did great. I tried to read. I tried. I tried. I love that scene. I love, I, I love Shelley Duvall. It's so sad that she got really taken advantage of by Kubrick, as in, like, he really fucked with her, fucked with her head on that set. She's incredible in the film. She's incredible in other films, but like, uh, it's fucked up. Fucked up. Okay. Exterior, Colorado mountains. Dead, long shot. High angle trees on side of mountain. Hammer tracks forward over them to Jack's car moving away along road. Cut to interior, Jack's car. Day, medium shot. Wendy sitting beside Jack as he drives along mountain road. Danny between them is leaning on backs of their seats. Wendy yawns. This one's you, Greg. Am I wet? Am I Wendy? Yeah, and Simon's Danny. Okay. Boy, we must be really high up. The air feels so different. Uh huh. Daddy. Yes. I'm hungry. Well, sh you should have eaten your breakfast. We'll get something as soon as we get to the hotel. Okay. Okay, Mom. Hey, wasn't it around here that the Donner Party got snowbound? I think that was farther west than the Sierra. What's the Donner Party? There were a party of settlers covered wagon times. 
They got snowbound one winter in the mountains. They had to resort to cannibalism in order to stay alive. You mean they ate each other? They had to, in order to survive. Jack, don't worry, Mom. I know all about cannibalism. I saw it on TV. See? It's okay. You saw it all on the television. That's a great scene. That's a great scene. <laughs> okay, I'm going to find another one. I want to do uh, Danny and uh, Ullman. Or not Ullman. Uh, Danny and Scatman. Uh, Danny and, what's his name? Doc. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. not Doc. What's his name? Um, Halloran. Yeah, I, yeah. Halloran. Dick Halloran. Care, the, 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 uh, care, the groundskeeper. Yeah, I'm just looking for it now. Um, I think we're almost there. I think it's here. And this is Wendy, Wendy. No, nope, that's Jack. Halloran and Danny. I think it is page 33, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I think I got it here. It's, oh, sorry. No, it's a little further down. I'm, I want to get the whole scene here um, where he talks to him. Okay. It's 34 then, bottom of 34, I think. Okay, it's right. Uh, go to 41 or 40. Go to 40. Okay, hold up. There we go. Gotcha. Okay, so. Do you know how I knew your name was Doc? You know that I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I can remember when I was a little boy, my grandmother and I hold conversations entirely without ever opening our mouth. She called it shining. And for a long time, I thought it was just the two of us that had the shine to us. Just like you probably thought you was the only one. But there are other folks, though mostly they don't know it or don't believe it. How long have you been able to do it? Why don't you want to talk about it? Page 42. Uh, I'm not supposed to. Who says you ain't supposed to? Tony. Who's Tony? Tony's little boy that lives in my mouth. Is Tony the one that tells you things? Yes. How does he tell you things? <laughs> It's like I go to sleep and he shows me things, but when I wake up, I, I can't remember anything. Does your mom and dad know about Tony? Yes. Do they know he tells you things? Has Tony ever told you anything about this place, about the Overlook Hotel? I, I don't know. Now think real hard, Doc. Think. Maybe he showed me something. Try to think what it was. <sighs> Mr. Halloran, are you scared of this place? No, I'm scared of nothing here. It's just that, you know, some places are like people. Some shine and some don't. I guess you could say the Overlook Hotel here is something about it that's like shining. Is there something bad here? Well, you know, Doc, when something happens, it can leave a trace of itself behind. Say, like, if someone burns toast. Well, maybe things that happen leave other kinds of traces behind. Not things that anyone can notice, but things that people who shine can see. Just like they can see things that haven't happened yet. Well, sometimes they can see things that happened a long time ago. I think a lot of things happen right here in this particular hotel. Over the years, not all of them was good. What about room 237? Room 237? You're scared of two th room 237, ain't ya? No, I ain't. Mr. Halloran, what is room 237? What is in room 237? Nothing. 
There ain't nothing in room 237, but you ain't got no business going in there anyway. So stay out. You understand? Stay out. All right. That's enough. I'm going to watch The Shining tonight. <laughs> I feel like I don't even have to now. That was, that was, that was like exactly from the film. Like that was a very well performed, Simon. Great. Thank you, Jane. You played a great uh, Danny, and uh, Greg, you, you played a great uh, Wendy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, was like convincing. Was that a good Shelly ball? All right. I'm going to move back downstairs where the lighting in the background is better, unless you need me to look at anything else on the computer. No, I mean, we can even, we can finish up here. I mean, what I was going to give you the opportunity to do was just do some shout outs and just sort of like, yeah, like everybody who's watching, like Victoria, Chris, Jason, Richard, Mark, Rain, everybody. Like, just if you want to give a shout out, whatever, man, like, you're going to continue updating people along the way. So people are going to certainly be yeah. even more. All right. Well, first off, I would like to shout out to everyone who was involved in the film. Um, they, I have so much love and so much, so many thanks for everybody who's helped to make this happen. I, I'm working almost every day trying to get all of this done because I want to make sure that, that all the work that everybody did and everything that everybody gave to me shines as, as best as it possibly can. So I want to thank um, everybody who acted in the film, Victoria, wonderful performances, um, to Chris for his fabulous performance, to Richard for believing in us and investing in the film and being an associate producer and the performance that he gave and, you know, everything of himself that he, that he brought to the role and to the performance. Um, Mark, who was wonderful. Um, you and Nick, who were there for the whole time. Jason, who gave a, a, a bang out performance. Um, Ryan, who did a great job. Sam, who was wonderful. I know I'm forgetting people, but just everybody who was involved did a wonderful job. And I want to thank them all so very much. And Rain, of course, who not only was fabulous in her job as acting in the film, but who has been my steadfast companion as we go through and edit this day in and day out as we just kind of cobble these scenes together and now as we pare things down and we try to cut this monster down from an hour and 53 minutes down to like 95 if we can get there thank you she's been wonderful um in in every way and everybody has you've been so great with all the live streams and keeping up all the social media and just I'm so thankful to everyone. And I just hope that all of the work that I'm putting in gives something back to them and, and creates something that everybody can be proud of. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that good? Did I, did I be okay? I feel like I'm forgetting something. There was something else I was gonna mention. You know what you never you know what you never did the first time, which you could do now. Which is you could do now. The wildfire You could ask me, you could ask me the wildfire questions because you never did it the first time. And I didn't even write them for this week. I didn't even put them. Um, you want the wildfire questions, don't you? You want them back. Wow, well, I mean Yeah, they are they are I'm the only one who hasn't done them. Yeah, I haven't done them. I haven't done them. Yeah, but nobody's interviewed you yet. How about we was go that on? a? We'll go. I'll just tell you mine as we go. So, what is your favorite word? My favorite word is probably love or acceptance. Okay. What is your least favorite word? Uh, give up or can't. What turns you on uh, creatively? Story. And tell me it. What turns you off sexually? Oh. Um, 
disinterest. <laughs> uh, uh, Rain would like to level. Would you, would like you to level with us? Uh, this is a safe space. Please just admit that Simon is you. Simon is me. We are You're the same person. Our brains yep. are one. You cool. see? You I see? Mean, we yeah. are connected. Beautiful. Uh, what? Uh... Yes. As <laughs> I love ice cream. I can't have much of it because it does bad things to me. But yeah, I love ice cream. I love to travel. You know what? Maybe it's me. Ooh. Greg, can you just uh, tell us a little bit about this photo? <sighs> Okay, so my buddy Jeff, who um, actually did the entire score for Ice Cream Sunday, we were in a band together. <laughs> oh my God. We were in a band, just the two of us. We did a bit of music and um, we did a bit of music together. We put out an EP, we, we wrote a few songs. Um, and that was some of the promotional photos for our, our, our group and our creative music endeavor. Nice. <laughs> There's more. That isn't the worst one. <laughs> oh, I like, I like. Uh, oh, back to the wild part questions. Um, yes. What is the sound or noise that you hate? You know that sound of like metal or like those garbage bins scraping on the concrete? Like that, <laughs> that, that sound. <laughs> um, yes, hate that. Oh my God. Uh, what sound or noise do you love? Rain falling through the trees and hitting like the ground and the roof in the late spring and early fall when you can have the windows open. All right. What is your favorite curse word? Fuck. Isn't it everybody's? <laughs> Not mine. I say it far too much. Anyways. Uh, what uh, profession, other than your own, would you like to attempt? A filmmaker? <laughs> well, let's, let's, say you are a film, let's say you're a filmmaker. Yeah, let's say you're a filmmaker as well. Theoretical physicist? Because, yeah, because you're solving the mysteries of the universe, right? You're like, you're like on that. the cutting edge of... You're on the cusp. By the way, about reality. Pardon? You're on the cusp. By the way, my favorite word, cusp. You like, that's your favorite word? Nice. I kind of like cusp. <laughs> I'm on the cusp. No, I don't like it. I hate it. Uh, I never want to use it. You know what? The other C word when other people say it is is another is another good curse word. Though being a guy, it's kind of testy to say that one. But anyways, keep going. Uh, white people, white straight men can't say anything. What profession would you not? Pardon? What, what profession? profession would I not? I don't think I'd be a very good teacher of children. <laughs> really? Yeah. I feel like I'd be a good teacher if I really wanted to be. My little brother might <laughs> have a teacher, and I'm like, that's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, it's like, it's a very. I, I, you know what? I think it's wonderful. I just don't think I'd be very good at it because I don't think I'd have the patience. It's a very giving job. You have to be very giving, um, and like be there for it. It is. Every it is. But like, there's a lot of teachers too that are not like that. But a good teacher is like that. They are. My mom was a teacher. Greg, shout out to Greg's mom, Virginia, one of the best teachers in the world. Best teacher, uh, best mother. Maybe even the and universe. She taught you all that you know. Uh, if heaven exists. What would you want to hear from God? Or what would you want Surprise! to hear? What would you want to hear God say when you arrive? Surprise! Because I would be. 
<laughs> and funny. and if he said that, it would mean that even though I didn't believe it existed, I still got in. So if it exists and I get there, surprise, and then let me in the gate. That would be that would be what I'd like to hear. <laughs> I think because it's our fortieth live stream, we should go uh, through every single person that's come on this live stream and give them a quick thank you. You down? Hell yeah. Maitili Van Kucherman, thank you. Trish Renoni, thank you. Aya Hart, thank you. Squeeze and thanks, Denny Kremblis, thank you. Vladimir Sapolsky, thank you. Vladcast. Michael Thompson, thank you. Christmas special to everyone that came on, including Victoria, who should be coming on very soon, I think. Uh, Rain Pakoda and Chris Vlahos. Greg Holmes and Mikey Rocco. Hari Ramesh. Robert Alfieri. We did a Canadian live stream on the American Election Day. To be proud of Canada. Shout out to Canada. <laughs> Colton Colley. Thank you. Xander Metz. Thank you very much. Jason Douglas Lupish. Kate Campbell. Travell Simpson. Uh, we went and talked about the visual effects workflow on Wildfire with Greg. We had a film marketing one. Uh, we talked about the locations, all the people that donate locations for Wildfire. Casting. Uh, we talked about casting the actors on Wildfire and going through all of the different people that have been in, in, uh, involved. Uh, we had a live stream with Mikey Rocco. Uh, we went short for short with uh, myself and Nick. Uh, we had some mystery guests on the 15th live stream. Uh, we had Steve Kassam. We had Mikey Rocco again. We had Jeff Malish. Or is it Malish? It's Malish. Chris Langford. Ryan Bannon. Michaela Rogerson. Samantha Lockyer. Adam Greckel. Michael Lake. Richard Nestor. Mark Matthews. Jason Terrio, Greg Holmes, and the impromptu first one with Chris Vallejos. And Nick and I. 40. Wow. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's been a ride, and I have been there for everyone, and it has been great. Thank you. We've done at least 40 hours. At least we've done more. Oh, I think you've done. I think you've done fifty-five hours by the time all is said and done. <laughs> think of all the prep time, the promotions, everything. It's it's been a ride, and we're learning a lot while we go through it. And looking forward to fifty. Let's go for the next ten. It's going to be awesome. Hey, I am excited, and I just want to let everybody know that as of last week, I've started on the visual effects. We're going through um, rotoscoping right now, which has been challenging, but I think I've got a flow um, set up now. So I'll be sharing some stuff in the coming couple of weeks um, as things come together. I'm working on two scenes in particular right now that I'm hoping to have all the roto done before the end of the week and be at the point where I'm starting to insert some of the stuff into the background and maybe two weeks from now i'll have a couple of clips to share with people but we'll see how it goes amazing well greg i appreciate everything that you continue to do and just everything that you do for me in my life i appreciate you brother um you know no, no matter what um i think this film uh, is just we're all going to be really proud of it so i'm just really i'm already very proud of it so i'm just excited to uh, have it uh to continue working on it and you know, that's exciting. The work is exciting. So I'm excited. Me too. I love the work. I love the challenge. I love solving problems. I love telling stories. It's just everything. Everything's great. And I'm excited to, to finish everything off. It's I think we're we, we've got some momentum and some steam now. and We're going to get it done. We did it, boys! And girls! <laughs> All right. Cheers. I mean, let's introduce to you, it's, to everyone. Yeah, I don't even have a fucking drink tonight. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, I introduced Nick back on the live stream if you don't mind. Peace out, guys. Mind giving Nick a little bit of an intro? 
Coming up on the live stream tonight is none other than Nicholas Jansen, TikTok star, boom mic operator, and sound technician extraordinaire. <laughs> His work on Wildfire was second to none. Not only that, he is a wonderful human being. Everybody join me in welcoming back to the show, the one, the only, Nicholas Jansen. Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was great. Bringing uh, Mr. Nicholas Jansen uh, back to the live stream. Woo! <laughs> Greg. He's Some great. Kind words. He's a goddamn sweetheart. He's he's far too kind with my with my sound technician skills. I mean, let's Terrible be honest. I, I I still have a lot to learn. Well, shall we uh, play? play <laughs> he's had to do a lot of polishing to my work, but <laughs> um, is there, is there a Creed song you'd like, my brother? Ooh, I have. I've really been falling off on the Creed lately. Uh, Rain. There's literally a Creed song called Rain, which is ironic considering Wildfire, but it, that's the song I've been going to for a while. So if you can find a way to play the song Rain by Creed. Chords for Rain by Creed. If you can, I'll, play, I'll play the chords if you can play, if you can sing it. It goes something like this. Well, we could do it. In, I don't have the lyrics in front of me, but we can do it instrumental. You always want me to sing, Jade. Can you help me out? Can you lend me a hand? It's safe to say that I'm stuck again. Well, this is better. This is actually a good. You don't know the song, so it's good. Trapped between this life and the light, I just can't figure out how to make it right. A thousand times before, I wonder <laughs> if there's something. Oh, something more. I feel like it's gonna rain like this for days. So let me now and wash everything away. This sounds familiar. Not even close. I need to do what I know, man. <laughs> no, it's not even close, but. Hey, you asked. I'm trying not to do the same like four songs we always do. Well, those are the only four songs anybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Got to branch out a little bit. They have a deep, deep discography. A deep canon. They have a deep canon of anthems. When dreaming guided to another world time and time again. Again. At sunrise, fight to stay asleep because I don't want to leave the comfort, the comfort of, of, of this place. place. Because there's a hunger, long to escape. I am a little well, I'm aware. It's there. Let's make our, our escape. Come on, let's go yeah. there. Let's cast when we stay. Can you take me higher to a place where blind men see? Do you? Can you take me higher? To a place with gold and oh, That's wonderful. Would our change into a appreciation? My friend, oh, and sacrifice all those things. I can make my dreams the same. The only difference. Yes, to let love replace all I hate. Sing along, Nick. So let's go there. Let's go there. 
Make a mistake. Make a mistake. Come on, let's go there. Let's can we stay? Can you take me to a place where blind men see? Can you take me higher to a place with golden streets? So let's go there. Let's go there. Come on, let's go there. Yes. Can we take Yes. Can you take me? Send it to a place where ah. black air sleep. Can you take me? Can you take me higher to a place where go then street? My girlfriend's no longer watching. Ah, ah, ah. Well, to a place with golden That's a sign that, that it's time to stop. Well. I got to so, say, though, what you... Greg, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was an enjoyable, fun little interview. Thanks to Simon for joining us as well. Absolutely. Simon was a hit. Simon was a hit. And uh, very, very excited for not only Wildfire to continue uh, the post-production process, but also Ice Cream Sunday to be available to the world. Absolutely. July. July I've, seen, I've seen, I think I've seen little bits and pieces, uh, but very excited for that to be available. You want, and, the whole, um, want the whole cone. I want that whole cone and everything inside. So... Diamonds. Pressure makes diamonds. Pressure makes diamonds, and diamonds are forever. That's beautiful. Ooh. Especially for a big old ring. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> trying to tell me something, oh. Jade? You're going you're gonna to propose to me? <laughs> it's been six goddamn years. Six Nothing goddamn glory. glory. Best years of our lives! Just a sore behind. Oh, I love you, buddy. Oh, love you too, man. It's, uh, have a great. Well, go, have a great go, night. Man. TikTok. <laughs> He's got a lot of good vids. Up, guys. I got a lot of. I got a big back catalog of goodies Keep for coming. you. Keep them coming. He got. He got eight hundred thousand views on his fourth video. He hasn't quit it. <laughs> that was actually when I was laying down there. That's exactly where it happened. Where it happened? I was just laying there with the phone at my face. Why do we only have five people watching? Bring your fucking 800,000 people over. And get them over here. I see. It says eight for me. Can you do some wildfire posts? Yeah, I thought about that. You are a producer. Be the producer. Just uh, give me some of those behind the scenes photos and I'll do like a little story time about how I worked on a film. Love Confessions with Wildfire. Actress Emily Mona with the Love Confessions with Wildfire. That'd be cool. That would be cool too. All right, well, we'll definitely consider that. And we'll workshop uh, all these ideas. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm down. Everything's in play. Uh, looking forward to next week's live stream. Uh, we'll uh, reveal the guests later on this week. Uh, other than that, just everybody hope uh, you're doing all right out there. Yeah, where are they? Yep. Jason's on my side with this. It's like, come on, Nick. Get your shit together, brother. Get your fucking shit and bring them over here. What did he say? I'm not seeing the comments. What did he say? He said, Jade's got a point. Where are the 800K viewers? Whatever. Bye. <laughs> no! No! Jay. Oh, you guys are evil. You guys are a bunch of... I love you, Jason. Not you, Jade. Why am I so streaky? The lighting's so weird. Okay. There's like a from, haze around me. All right. From all those TikToks. It's from all those goddamn TikToks. Check me out on TikTok at Nicholas Jansen. Yeah. Help me get to 12,000. Help me get to 20K tomorrow. All right. Uh, that was a great show. Thank you, everybody. Jason loves you.
he's commented that he loves you. I'm glad. That's wonderful. <laughs> want to celebrate good love. Good love. Oh, no. Great. Oh. It's all mutual. <laughs> it's a big old love fest. Big old fest of love. All right. You need to go to bed. <laughs> go to bed. You need to go to bed. You need to eat your roast beef you can go to bed. My boy could eat a chicken sandwich. Very impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> Oh, I saw Tom Green on Twitter the other day said he wa- he would like to make a sequel to Freddy Got Fingered. Really? I think that would be very interesting. But Without Rip Torn. I know, I know. Too. I mean, I, I would like to see Tom Green do a sequel, though. I kind of love the myth- the mythical quality of that being the only film he ever directs. I think that's kind of magical, though. Yeah. I mean, anything he's, he's going to do now, though, is going to be like, I don't know. His comedy's changed, but I think he's funny. But he's like, I don't know. He should just, like, make films. <laughs> yeah, I'd be interested. Anyway, well, we'd love to have him on the show. Well, shall we play them out with one more tune? No. <laughs> no. One more. No! One more for good measure. All right, I'll do a little light show. to the episode. Thank you to everybody for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. And we'll see you before you know it. Fire it up, Nick. Fire it up. He's on fire. Fire it up. Wildfire live stream. We got guests galore. We got games. We got hard-hitting questions. We got all the greatest. 
actors, filmmakers, musicians, creators, creatives. Join the wild stream, wild stream. <laughs> and more. Do the M&M. It's too, it's too vogue. Can you just do a little M&M just to promote the live stream? One, one bar. Oh, I'm trying to think of like how to do it. All right. Wildfire. Air them out like a bike tire. Um, I don't know. Lance, Lance, you got to cancel Lance and Vance and Amp. Well done. Well, thanks, brother. It's been 90 thanks. minutes. <laughs> That's good. That's more than enough. That's too much. <laughs> Did not need half an hour with me at the end. <laughs> Take care, brother. All right, everybody. Bye. Thanks for another live stream.